Hello everyone, this is Jesus Flores from San Jose State University's Adapted PE program. Today's lesson is going to be some beginning aspects of soccer focusing mostly on passing and trapping. So our cues for the day are going to be based on those two skills. Our passing cues are going to be the inside of the foot, the laces, and the outside of the foot. For our trapping cues, we are going to focus on having soft touches on the ball, or soft foot, as well as using our heel trap. I use various equipment for this video. Uh, as you can see, I use two soccer balls, some goals, and some cones, as well as a chair for our wheelchair unit. However, uh, not necessary to use two balls, as well as not necessary to use cones or goals. I just use those just to be more effective and efficient with my time but really only one soccer ball is needed and any device that helps to stop the ball is, uh, is, is useful in, this, uh, in these drills. For cones, if you don't have any cones, you can definitely use water bottles as I showed in this picture. I did not use water bottles just because I do have cones. Uh, any type of marker that you can see on the ground is useful. You can use that as an overall theme for the rest of my videos here. Um, once again, cones are not necessarily necessary or essential. In this first activity, we are going to be warming up our legs predominantly by running to three different targets. Now, these three different targets should be identifiable uh, either by number or by color. And what you're going to want to do is have a partner, a parent, a sibling, anybody who's able to distinguish from the three colors to simply call out directions at which point you will run to those targets. So, for example, here I'm getting called green, so I go to green, back pedal back to my main cone, then yellow backpedal all the way back to my main cone and so forth. You're going to want to run this activity for at least three minutes. Uh, it's at least three minutes just to get a good warm up in the legs, get blood rushing through your body and really just to start feeling a little more alert and ready for the different drills and the skills we will be working on today. If it's really hot, make sure that you're taking adequate water breaks as well as uh, rest in the shade to avoid being in the sun for too long. Uh, about midway through or a quarter of the way through, however you feel or your partner feels necessary, change the different locomotions. So here you saw me slide and now I'm going into high knees. Once again, it's the same, the same general goal uh, to get to each cone, whatever cone is being called out. And what I would do then is go to the cone using the proper locomotive uh, technique and again just run this activity for about three minutes to really get a comfortable and useful warm-up. In this first activity, we are going to be working again with our partner to pass, simply pass the ball. In the first part of the activity, we're going to be using the inside of our foot, giving a soft touch, running up, and then having our partner place the ball back in the middle between us. We're not working on trapping here, so do not 
you do not need your partner to pass you the ball back. Really, all you need them to do is to set it back up in the middle so that you can run up and give a good, solid, but soft and controllable pass. Um, we're not here to blast the ball at our partner and completely make them lose control. About a minute or so into the activity, we're going to start using our laces part of the shoes. Uh, so that's really like the top part of your shoe, as you can see me demonstrate there. You still want to make sure you're following through the same way you would if you're kicking with the inside of the foot. And with this activity, you really want to be careful not to lift the ball off the ground unless that is your goal to do so. Uh, in essence, you want to make sure the ball stays on the ground again so that's easy to control for your partner and to really practice control of the ball for yourself as well. We also want to make sure that we are using both of our feet. I've been using my left foot a little bit more than my right just because that's my weaker foot. I want to, that's the foot that I want to be working on the most. However, it's important to practice with both your feet to make sure that you are improving and working on both feet to even out any differences in skill that there may be from you favoring your right or your left foot. And last but not least, we're going to be using our outside of the foot, as you can see me demonstrate here in slow motion, just to show how the kick should look like and what area of the foot you should be kicking it with. We do a few demonstrations here with both my feet. The reason it's important to learn this type of passing technique, as well as the other two, is to ensure that you're able to use all areas of your foot with the inclusion of the heel in this lesson at least. This may be the trickiest of the three types of ways to pass the ball, but it's important to learn and to work on our weaknesses as well as our strengths. So even if you may feel that you don't feel as comfortable as you do with the other two types of uh, passes, feel free to take about a minute or so and continue to work on this technique as well, just to either learn something new or improve on an already known skill. Here we will be demonstrating our second passing activity. We'll include a triangle setup using three cones and it will also include the help of our partner. Here you will watch a demonstration. What you are going to be doing is again only working on passing and not trapping. You will be passing forwards using the different passing techniques that we have been using here while we'll be using the inside of the foot. We will be passing to our partner with the full follow through. While they pass it, they will stop, leave it there and you will then run up to the ball and pass again at the stationary target. Feel free to change the distance between each cone if you feel it is necessary. I like to keep the same size, although I have seen other athletes uh, make completely different and deformed triangles with one short pass, one medium pass, and one long pass. Feel free to go ahead and do that if you feel advanced or if you feel that this activity is too easy. Um, about halfway through the three minute mark, which you should be running this activity at, feel free to change direction. So here you will see how my partner is now going to go to the other cone on the left side of the screen and now we will be going in the opposite direction as we were going. This will also help to change the foot that you are using and to become a little more aware about uh, changing directions and not getting used to only going one way and using one foot. In this activity, we will be working on trapping now. We're going to use the inside of our foot to trap the ball as well as the bottom sole part of our shoes to trap, trap the ball as well. Here we will be showing you a quick demonstration. It is very important to keep a soft foot when trapping the ball, not keeping your foot extremely solid to where the ball will bounce off the way it would off a wall. Uh, when you're trapping under the foot, you want to make sure you have an angle at the heel. You don't want to have a flat foot with the ground because the ball will then potentially slide under your foot and just continue rolling behind you. So here, in this activity, you're going to be using both your feet to trap, using both uh, different skills to trap, you know, both the heel and the inside of the foot. What you can edit in this activity is the distance between you and your partner. Your partner will be passing you the ball. You will trap and then you will pass back to your partner. In this activity, I'm very close to my partner just because of taping sake, but 
you can completely edit the distance between you and your partner as you become more comfortable with both skills. Feel free to move farther back from your partner and ask them to give you a harder, more firm pass, as well as potentially even having yourself move around and to receive the pass while you're in movement. Not while they're in movement, but while you're in movement. That actually will make the activity a little bit more challenging because you won't be in a stationary position. Again, you want to make sure you're using both your feet and that you're adjusting your positioning, your body positioning, to where you need to stand so that you're able to comfortably control the ball using both feet. Like in the other two activities, you want to make sure that you're running the activity for at least three minutes, more if necessary, more would actually get you more touches. You want to make sure that you're getting as much passes and as much traps as possible. Um, failed attempts at passing and trapping are okay. Of course, there's no nothing to lose if you make a mistake here, uh, but do try to learn from your mistakes. If you feel a little off balance in a certain body position, you can feel free to change that and adjust it and ensure that you're learning from each different touch, see what works for you, see what you're more comfortable with as well. In this uh, final game activity, we're gonna put all of our skills to the test. We're gonna increase the difficulty of the skill as it progresses. So we're gonna start off by doing the same thing we did in the beginning, our first activity, by running up without trapping the ball. Now, we have two different targets and a defender in the way uh, of us scoring. Our goal is to score a goal in one of the two goals that are on both sides of the defender. Okay, so you can use the inside of the foot, you can use the laces, or you can use the outside of the foot. But either foot, whatever you feel more comfortable with. It would be best to switch off after every shot uh, for maximum practice on both feet. So I'm gonna demonstrate here. I missed, it's okay. The ball. Once again, you're trying to get the ball away from the defender, kind of like if there was a big goal behind it. All right, got it. Once again, we want to make sure that we are using all three different passing techniques as well as working a lot on our aim and focus about where we're hitting the ball, how we're hitting the ball, what part of the foot we're using to correctly achieve our, our target, which is to get the ball inside the net. Now, if you are failing to complete any shots and you feel like this is too complicated, Feel free to increase the size of the targets and maybe get rid of the defender and just have somebody to have, help you shag the balls. Um, that's something that you can definitely do to simplify this activity. So in this activity, what we're going to do now, our partner is going to pass the ball to us where we have to practice our trapping. Again, you can use the inside of the foot as well as the bottom of the foot to stop it. And then we shoot, okay? Once again, I missed. That's okay. Pass the ball. Trap again. Now we're going to shoot. Our defender is still trying to get us to miss. Um, in this scenario, we're just demonstrating so he's not really going out and trying to get the shots. Whenever you use all of the balls that you have, bring them back and redo this drill. Okay, pause it.
Then no look. As you can see, our goalie is really good. So now we're going to start kicking a little harder. <laughs> For students in wheelchairs or power chairs during this activity, we will be doing the same thing that we did in the beginning of the video. Uh, we're still going to the cones, we're still going around the cone, or at least touching the cone. Um, I will demonstrate this throughout the use of pictures instead of video just because I don't have a wheelchair or power chair. Uh, so I had to take videos of me basically moving so you're going to see a little bit of a choppiness. But basically, the skill is the same. It's a good warm up, especially if you're in a wheelchair because you're using your own effort to propel yourself forward and, of course, get yourself around. This warm up is also really, really good about making sure that you get comfortable changing the direction and maneuvering your wheelchair around cones and small, doing small movements. So go ahead and do that as well for three whole minutes. In this first drill that we did, it's the same again as we did without the wheelchair. If you're a student in a wheelchair power chair, you're still going to propel yourself forward either using your own force or the power chair's force to go up to the ball and either kick it if you are able to kick it or hit it with your wheelchair with the intention of getting it to your partner. So some modifications that you can add to increase the difficulty of this task, especially if you're using just the power chairs uh, straight front line to hit it. Because it is a straight line, you may want to come at the ball from an angle and increase the difficulty a little bit after you get comfortable hitting it in a straight line back to your partner. Uh, once again, make sure that your partner is placing the ball back to where it needs to go so that you are able to go up to it and hit it. Once again, we're not working on trapping here, it's just passing. During this second activity, we are going to be doing the triangle drill. Uh, once again, we're not working on trapping, we're only working on passing. In this drill, you are going to be putting your warm-up to the test because you will also be having to change the direction and going in a sharp turn motion. So make sure that you are a familiar and comfortable with changing the direction of your chair. Um, in this drill, once again, like with, with the demonstration that I gave, make sure that you are changing direction. Uh, make sure that you're not going in the same like circle-like motion, make sure that you don't only go clockwise or non-clockwise, you go both directions and ensure that you're becoming familiar with both, both changes of direction to your right and to your left. Once again, I'm apologizing for you know, the quality of the way we are showing you the power chair modification, wheelchair modification, but it's the best we can do just because I unfortunately don't have a chair to use to show a better more appropriate demonstration. So here is what we got. Once again, if you feel this is too easy, feel free to modify the distance as well as the type of pass or even the speed of which you are passing the ball to your partner. In this activity, we will be working on our first shooting-ish drill. It's not necessarily a shooting drill, it's more of a passing drill, but we're, we are passing to targets, which is why it's sort of similar to shooting. 
you're not passing to your partner in this drill. You're avoiding your partner. Your partner has become like a defender. So you're trying to keep the ball away from him or her. Uh, with the goal set up next to my partner, as you can see here, I will be shooting or passing to both goals without my partner knowing which one. Um, if you are in a wheelchair or power chair, make sure that you are able to maneuver the chair comfortably to adjust the angle that you're approaching the ball, as well as changing the type of pass that you're giving. So for example, if you're in a power chair, using the side of the chair as well as the edged corners. If you're in a wheelchair and are able to physically kick the ball, use more than one passing drill like the laces or the outside of the foot like I've spoke about earlier in the video. In this final game drill, we will be working on our passing as well as our trapping. Uh, so in this drill, make sure that you are using two, more than at least one type of trapping skill and as well as using more than one type of passing skill. Uh, so if you are in a power chair and you're not able to physically kick the ball yourself, use the different parts of the chair, for example, the side of the chair or even the angled corners if you can to make this activity a little more useful and so that you have a more developed feel for how your chair can be used during a power soccer game. If you're in a wheelchair and you are able to physically kick the ball yourself, make sure that you're using more than one t passing and trapping technique. Um, once again, make sure that you turn this into like a game activity where it is a competition between you and your partner. Uh, count your goals if you can. Give yourself props for succeeding in certain shots. Work on whatever you need to work on. Work on maneuvering your chair and providing effective and efficient movement so you are able to succeed in this activity. Thank you guys for tuning in. We hope that this was a effective and useful video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Hopefully you tune in to our next videos where we'll be working on fitness, on dribbling, and on shooting as well as more complicated and more complex passing and trapping as well as other dribbling drills and techniques. See you next time.